We're going to review how to create a quality inspection template that has a field that collects multiple samples and how to use that with the new sampling worksheet feature. So to get started, we're going to create a new template. And in this template, we're going to add in some fields. Now, this step is the same as if you were to add in uh, existing fields um, from your other systems. We're going to choose, for example, let's look for a temperature. Here's a temperature. And let's also look for a weight and a width. Let's see if we have a pressure and a pH. Perfect. Okay. Now, in these existing fields, we're going to configure just some of them to collect multiple samples. So, we're going to choose temperature and pressure measurements in pH to collect multiple samples. We're going to keep weight and width as single value samples. And we're going to show how you can still collect all these values. Um, in a mixed fashion. So to tell temperature to collect multiple samples for this template, uh, all you need to do is specify the sample summary. If it's blank, it's not going to collect multiple samples. If it's anything other than blank, then it's going to collect multiple samples. So for simplicity, we're just going to choose uh, last for the temperature, or actually let's choose average instead. And for pressure, we will choose uh, perhaps average as well, and same thing for pH. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to connect this up to something simple, and in our case we'll just choose an item ledger entry for simplicity with no conditions. And we'll create a test. We're going to choose our item ledger entry, and we'll choose something that has multiple quantities such as this item here. All right. So now when you're collecting multiple samples, you're going to notice a new area on the quality inspection test is shown. And it's going to show you the inspection level, uh, the quantity uh, that comes in from the document, which you can configure on your source document configuration. And then it's also going to show you the sampling plan code and sample size, as well as the AQL limit. Now, the inspection level and the AQL limit, you can configure these on the template or you can configure it on the quality inspector setup. You also don't have to configure these at all. Uh, where you would want to configure them is if you want the sample size to come in automatically. So the sample size can be configured with the AQL uh, tables that are defined on the quality inspector setup. Now it's uh, basically that simple. So we have the inspection level set up, we have the quantity set up, and the sampling plan code, and that tells us that the sample size for that, based on our uh, inspection level and AQL limit configuration, is 50. So if we were to take a look at some of the values inside of here, we just click the editor, and we're in a single field editor now, just for that one uh, field. So we're just collecting samples right now for temperature. So you can see some details on the right hand side for the sample statistics, giving an idea of everything you have. And in the sample area, it'll give you an idea of how many samples you have remaining to test, as well as uh, the acceptance point and rejection point. So what we can see here is we know to stop testing basically as soon as we've hit six failures. All right, so let's put in some uh, values here. So we're going to go five, four, Oh, yes, we do want to assign this to ourselves. 10, 15, 1, and uh, let's see here, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right. So now in this example, uh, we can see that we've got uh, several failed samples. And we can also see a rejection point without failure. And um, 
we can see the average value. So we should expect to see that average value of seven now uh, disclosed in. So if you were to edit uh, single values at a time, so let's say that you're using a specific tool that collects multiple measurements, that would be a good way of entering in the values. If you're collecting um, multiple samples for multiple fields at the same time, so for example, um, temperature, pressure, and pH, uh, which would be some examples of fields that would typically be measured all at the same time, you would use the sampling worksheet. You can access the sampling worksheet just by clicking the sampling worksheet action on the quality inspection test. This action will become enabled as soon as the test detects that there are multiple samples that need to exist. So the sampling worksheet uh, is very similar, except you don't get to see the individual statistics. It does, however, let you enter in multiple values all at the same time, as well as simple color coding on whether or not um, those values are passed or failed. Okay, now we're going to notice that only the fields that are configured for multiple samples are shown in the sampling worksheet. You can also drill down into uh, the statistics for any given field just by clicking the three dots on any of the rows. So by clicking the three dots, we're going to be drilling down into the temperature overall for this quality inspection test. And then we can see the individual values, and then we can have a better understanding of, this, of these statistics, as well as the acceptance and rejection points and other details that might be important for that particular field. All right. So when you collect multiple samples, if you're not using an AQL configuration code, what will happen is the grade on the line will automatically... Um, use whatever the summary statistic is that you've chosen for your value. So for example, if you're using average, then it would apply this grade onto that average value. If you'd like instead to use AQL failures, so to take advantage of something like the rejection uh, limit, then you, all you need to do is specify the failure grade on those AQL tables. So let's do that now and we can compare and contrast those failures. So we see here that we're on general level two and we're on sampling plan code H and we are on AQL four. So we're going to navigate to quality inspector setup. And on the quality inspector setup, we're going to see two different tables. So the first one is just the sample size configurations. So the sample size configurations um, are just a way to tell the system what sampling plan code to use for a given minimum lot size and a maximum lot size. So in the case of our example, uh, we had an output quantity uh, that was in the 300s. So that would have been used for the lot size and it would have looked up in uh, here and then found in the sampling plan code of H. So that is how it found that sampling plan code of H. You can then use a secondary table, and that's a sampling plan configuration. And this is where we can uh, then define uh, what the, uh, for any given AQL, what the acceptance and rejection point is. So if we put in that sampling plan code of H for general inspection level of two, we can see that the sampling size is 50. That's also where that 50 came from. And we know that our AQL in this scenario, we've configured it to four. So the acceptance point, which we saw, was 5, and the rejection point was 6. So now there's this other field here called reject grade. So if you leave this blank, it's going to use the uh, summary field on the test line to determine how to pass or fail that test line. However, if you specify a failure grade here, so in this case here, I'm going to choose one called AQL fail, and you don't need to have a special um, failure grade uh, for this. It can just be your uh, your typical fail or error grade. Um, I'm just choosing a special one just so we can see the difference and how it uses that extra um, failure grade for this. All right, so now what will happen is when you have that reject grade specified, it's going to use that reject grade as soon as you have 
uh, sufficient failures on those samples that meet that rejection criteria. And above and beyond that, it's not going to use that just for the line. It's also going to use that for the test. So the idea here is as soon as you hit that reject point, uh, you know you don't need to collect multiple or you, don't, you know you don't need to collect additional samples. So instead, uh, we're just going to inform you right away that um, there's nothing else to do. So if we see this in action, uh, we can see that immediately it's already known this has a AQL failure. So let's uh, tweak these values uh, a little bit here. So let's um, change some of these to a pass. And let's put this as a minus 20. All right, and then we're going to have one that's also a 100. All right, so in this case here, we have the average being 12.1, uh, and we know that our pass description is minus 20 to 5. So overall, our um, rejection point hasn't been reached because we don't have that many um, rejected samples. We've only got one, two, three, four, which does not hit that rejection point of six. So what we're going to notice, however, is because we have that 12.1, if we didn't have that reject code supplied, it would be putting down um, that failure, which it is. However, as soon as you put in um, enough rejected samples, then it's going to choose that AQL failure, regardless of the of the statistic that you're using to summarize. So let's um, demonstrate that. So we need two additional samples that are going to be rejected. So we're going to put this as six and seven. All right. So we see that these individually have failed based on those grades. And we now see this AQL fail um, grade come in. And this is coming in because we've defined that on that sampling plan configuration table that under the circumstance of that inspection level and that AQL um, number uh, for our sampling size, uh, it should fail when the rejection point is there with that specific code. All right, so we can still see the individual grades or the individual samples have those passing and failing grades. And then you've got that AQL failure uh, that affects the line itself. If we go back to the test, we can now see two things. So we can now see that uh, it's failed the line with an AQL failure, but above and beyond that, it has also immediately failed the test. So the value here is you know that once you hit that rejection point, you no longer need to collect multiple samples. However, if you're using um, if you're not using the reject grade that's configured on that sampling plan configuration, then instead the grade on the line is going to act as it did before. So you still would need to finish collecting the, uh, the samples. In this case here, um, it, the system knows that there's no point in even collecting the weight or the width or the pH because this, um, this sample has already failed. This, this inspection test has already failed. All right. Now, um, editing other values is the same as before. So you can still uh, edit non-multi-sample uh, values in here. So for example, uh, weight and width are non-multi-samples. Uh, so they just act as they did before. And it's only when you get to the um, fields that are configured for multiple samples, do you get the drill down to the sample editor for that field or using the sampling worksheet you can see all of those uh, fields to be entered in all at once. So that is a review of the sampling worksheet um, and the ability to collect multiple samples for the quality inspector. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more great content and remember to hit that bell icon to stay updated. See you in the next video.